they brought me into a small dark room and they said, you have cancer. And it wasn't real. The word every woman fears. I had a look at the personal side of breast cancer and the art of healing through theater. Hello, I'm Beth Carroll. Welcome to New Hampshire Outlook. This program is about healing and dealing with breast cancer, a disease that strikes one out of eight women. In 2004, nearly 216,000 women nationwide heard the words they fear the most, breast cancer. In New Hampshire, 920 women were diagnosed. A key to survival is early detection. That's where mammograms come in. Most physicians advise women to get a baseline mammogram at age 35 and annual screenings after age 40. We'll talk about new treatments and hope for those battling the disease in a moment. But first, a story of survival, life after cancer, and the power of theater to heal. 35-year-old Betsy Duaney is busy getting ready for a weekend house party. Baking cookies, cleaning house, it's all pretty normal, just the way Betsy likes it. But life was anything but normal eight and a half years ago. I was 26. It was two weeks before my 27th birthday. And went in just because I had found a lump, was misdiagnosed two, two times prior to this. And suddenly they brought me into a small dark room and they said, you have cancer. How did your family respond? Patrick was the absolute gem. I, I can't thank him enough for all that he's done. Your husband. My husband. He, he just kept everything together, kept me smiling and laughing. and He was just incredible. She had long dreamed of being an at-home mom, but children and cancer treatment don't always mix, and doctors were not hopeful. When they told me I needed chemo, radiation, they wanted me to do stem cell transplant because I had so many lymph nodes involved. I had 14 out of 23 lymph nodes and things didn't look good. And I didn't want the stem cell. There was only a 1% chance of having children. And I wanted children. She lost a breast, her hair, and nearly lost her life. But four years after getting cancer, she gave birth to a baby girl. A boy followed two years later. Mm, he's definitely got his father's eyes and Patrick's mouth. Mm -hmm but it's definitely a cross between the two of us. Yeah. It's, it's a miracle that I have two children that I can hug every night and give a kiss to. Where is she? Go get her. Andrew, wait, come here. Ali, come here. Did you give Andrew a hug? So emotional. At times. When it comes to Patrick and the children, yes. Life changing? Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, How the, so? The saying, stop and smell the flowers, I stop and smell the flowers all the time. I feel silly, but I'm in the grocery store, take the kids over, we all stop and smell the flowers. Right, wait, 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 wait. 53-year-old Renee Russell is the mother of five who works at the off-site kitchen for the Hanover Co-op, where she is affectionately called the comfort food queen. I do all the quiche, and I do a lot of lasagnas, and I do... I'll span copitas and I'll do stews and things that I'm, I actually I'm comfortable with too. It was less than two years ago when Renee was in need of comfort herself. I had two sites of invasive lobular cancer. They called me in for another exam and then, um, then they did a biopsy and indeed it was cancer, breast cancer. I would go every Wednesday for chemotherapy, but I continued to work every day anyway, every other day, but I did have those Wednesdays off. Um, and it was difficult, but doable. No, there were times I had to force myself to put one foot in front of the other, but mm -hmm. I think I always wanted to come to work. So how's it going? Good. What are you making? Stuffed acorn squash. Oh. Uh, my mother comes from a family of 10 girls and three of them had breast cancer. A lot of women talk about losing your hair. That was actually one of the hardest things. It's amazing that you, it is. Uh, you don't realize how vain you are until your hair starts falling out and you're like, oh my God, I went through all this surgery and everything, it's my hair that's bothering me. I'll make enough quiche for probably 50 or 60 quiches that I'll make tomorrow morning. I do that three times a week. His life back to normal for you now? You think? It's better than ever, I think. 
in my opinion. Thanks in part to a 12-week writing and theater workshop at the Ray School in Hanover. Let's get started. Everybody up. It's the brainchild of noted author Jody Picoult and theater professional Leah Carey, who wanted to take a small group of breast cancer survivors on a journey of self-discovery and healing. To create something around a theme, so that, um, and particularly perhaps a traumatic theme, so that these women would be able to start to take ownership of something, of an experience that had once owned them. What have people gone through, and can they live through it? Here, D at the end, I had a mastectomy and radiation. The title of the production? One of the early ideas was the winner's circle, because all of these women have made it to the end. They are winners. Um, but Bosom Buddies came out of the text of the show and really seemed and the completely appropriate and sort of snappy and um, would make people sort of giggle. <laughs> now imagine that what you hold between your hands is a ball of golden light. The eight women met two evenings a week for 12 weeks. One night to write a narrative, the second night to compile it into a script for a performance. They came as strangers and will leave as friends, belonging to a sorority they say you don't want to join. Marsha was diagnosed with breast cancer about 15 years ago. She had two teenagers. Um, she tells a story in the show about never being seen without her wig because she didn't want to really announce to her kids how sick she was. PJ was diagnosed about two years ago. She had a radical mastectomy. She has a teenage son and works at King Arthur Flower. Bonnie's story is quite incredible. She has had various kinds of cancer throughout her life. She's been diagnosed at least three times that I know of. She also has a terminal liver disease that she's living with now and was diagnosed with breast cancer after she found out about the liver disease. Kathy was diagnosed with um, ductal carcinoma in situ. She had a mastectomy seven years ago. Dee Pingleton was diagnosed in the 1980s. She had two teenagers at home. She was a single mother. She now talks about how cancer gave her the courage to move to Vermont where she didn't know anyone, buy her own house, and really make a life for herself. Carol was diagnosed in 1988. She had three young children at home. Um, she had a radical mastectomy and the treatment that went with that, she's since lost her other breast as well. Because these are your own stories and you know these details better than anyone. You the women say the workshop has made a difference in their lives. I don't get as fearful as I used to be when I'd have my mammogram or have to go see the doctor with every little ache or pain that's associated with breast cancer. It's given me some of my vitality back. It's something new and different. So it's been, it's been a lot of fun. It's cool to know that there's other women out there that have the same experience that my mom had. Cancer did not make me sad or even angry. This used to bother me. People would say, Renee is so strong. She's always positive. What a trooper. One foot in front of the other. I want people to see that my strength was a facade. It definitely, <laughs> definitely helped her grow and I think she's finally gotten to meet other women and experience what they went through also and be able to grow through that. I've tightened, I've shortened, I've really tried to, um, to pull it down to its essence. Everybody walking in just the way we had talked about before and one by one you're going to turn around and give your little intro. Hi, I'm Carol. I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 1992 on my left side. I had a mastectomy and chemotherapy. I hope that people will come away with some greater compassion for what these women have been through and also a really true understanding that there is life after cancer. I want you to see my strength and my courage. I got through two cancers and survived to talk about it. Excellent. It is not the end of a person's experience that um, a woman is still a woman after she's, had a breast after she's had breast cancer and perhaps lost a breast. I am a woman who had breast cancer. It did not have me. 
I felt the dressings binding me from chin to waist, and I knew. Three doctors came in separately announcing it's malignant, like once wasn't enough. We are planning to have little packets of Kleenex at the door to hand out with the programs. This is not an unemotional show. Sitting in the car after I was diagnosed, I put my head on Rick's shoulder and cried. These women talk about real issues, and they talk about them from their gut. And sometimes it's hilariously funny, and sometimes it's absolutely gut-wrenching. Suddenly I was told that chemo and radiation would make my dream of having children nearly impossible. But then four years later, a miracle. 6.58 a.m., Saturday, <coughs> July 29, 2000. Allison Faith Dwayne took her first breath. There is life after cancer, and my children and I are living proof. If you take the time to dig deep, you can find a lot of things that are in there that you didn't deal with, and it's so much better to deal with them. Talk about them, write, you know, have friends that have had breast cancer. Don't shy away from that, which is what I did in the first place. Your daughter Allison is four. Yes. You haven't told her about the cancer. No. Why? When she's older, I think I can have a heart-to-heart -heart with her and just be gentle with the words and cautious. And what would you want her to know? That it's okay if it happens, not to be afraid of it, and technology by that point is going to be possibly in a situation where the cure is found. Mm. So hopefully it'll be a thing of the past by then. The theater is a very powerful tool. It can change people's minds. It can give information in a way that people don't even realize they're getting it. We all laughed. We all cried. We all hugged. And it's moved me on in so many ways. There is life after cancer. In fact, a better life. A better life. A different life and a better life. No question. Mother. Sister. Friend. Daughter. Grandmother, bride, wife, lover, survivor. The response was overwhelming, so they're taking the show on the road. They're sorting through invitations, and once logistics can be worked out, Bosom Buddies will be playing not only to New Hampshire audiences, but Vermont as well. Thanks to the Stratford Foundation, which has provided continuing major funding for the production of New Hampshire Outlook.